Good morning. Good morning. Once again, we welcome you here to the Second Baptist Worship Center on Word Alive. Amen. We are grateful for your presence and pray that you had a blessed week so yes. far. We're just excited to be here this morning because chapter 22 in the Gospel of Luke is a very pivotal point yes. in the history of Christianity. And we are just delighted to be here specifically at this time of the year. I know. Yeah. I said, ain't that amazing how it lined up? <laughs> we we uh, couldn't have mapped that out any I know. Better. You ain't yeah. lying. Yeah. That's so true. But but we're happy to have you with us this morning and, and pray that all is well. And once again, we're grateful that Minister White is here with us Amen. this morning. Thank God you, bless Jesus. you. Yes. Thank you for being here. And I know you're, you're just welcome. chomping at the bits to get to it this I'm morning. I'm grateful to be here this morning. I know that's right. That's I am. Uh, also this morning, we remind you, as always, hit that like button and share this Bible study. This is an awesome Absolutely. Bible study this morning. And you need to know that there are some other people who need mm. to know this truth other than yourself. Amen. So please make sure that you get the word out there and spread this, if you would, please. Amen. Uh, this morning, as always, we begin with the word of prayer, and we're asking you to pray for one another, to lift us up as we continue to yes. uh, come before you, uh, and pray that our being in your presence is a blessing mm -hmm. to you. Let's pray, Absolutely. shall we? Father, we're grateful for this privilege. We thank you for the opportunity to come together to fellowship and to learn more about your word. And we pray that in examining your word, God, it forces us to draw closer to you. And so we thank you in advance for your Holy Spirit, who's our divine teacher. And God, we just claim your presence among us right now. Yes. There are so many that are in desperate need of yes. your presence, yes. Father. Those who are in need of divine healing. And so we pray in the name of Christ Jesus that you'll touch lives in a very powerful way, that you'll be with them, that you'll heal, that you'll strengthen, that you'll encourage. And, oh, God, you said that if we touch and agree, mm. uh, we can have anything that's in oh, your will. Yes. And so right now we're Thank praying you, that we indeed are praying in your will. Be with us now. Bless our sick and shut in. Yes, uh, bless God. those who are viewing us right now. Oh, God. We pray that the, that this is a pivotal, powerful moment in their lives when you indeed touch them and indeed strengthen and encourage each of them. We thank you, God. We praise you because you are a great God. Bless yes, us according God. to your perfect will. We ask it all in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, and we do thank you. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. And this morning, uh, once again, we're going to begin by uh, allowing Minister White to share with us uh, those announcements that need to be made so Amen. we are privy uh, to what's transpiring both in the life of this ministry and in the life of the church. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Amen. everyone. Just a few announcements this morning. Um, for March 2023, don't um, just be mindful. Remember, we have Bible study every Sunday morning. Amen. It's called Empowerment yes. Hour. It's at 9 a.m. Please come out and join in the Bible study. We can never know enough of the Word of God. Amen. And so that's why it's important that we make sure we attend um, Bible study. Yes. Remember also that the church is fasting this week, Amen. March 20th through the 25th. Um, and so if you can... We ask that you might join in. Um, it's from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, and we ask you, you know, just to sacrifice something for for the Lord. Amen. And um, if you have any questions that you need answered, you can contact Active Elder Peggy, excuse me, for mm -hmm. more information. Also, we have the Men's Fellowship Saturday, March 25th at 9 a.m. For all the men, please mm -hmm. come out and be a part of the fellowship um, that God may do great things yes. in our lives. Also, amen, next week mm -hmm. starts our spring revival. Amen. We have a guest amen. preacher for all three services, Bishop Rudolph Mills of Philadelphia, excuse me, <coughs> and we have a guest vocalist every night. So that's March 26th. 
27th and 28th. That's three days, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Amen. Please Amen. Uh, prepare to come out and join in, and we will be so grateful to see your face yes. in the yes. place. Okay. Uh, church spring cleaning has been rescheduled for April the 1st. Mm -hmm. Also, please remember that um, our Wiz play date showtime are June 16th um, and June 17th. The times for June 16th is 7 p.m. June 17th is 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. Um, we, we have rehearsal for the shows mm -hmm. um, Sunday at 4 p.m., Monday at 6 p.m. and Friday at 6 p.m. If you need information, um, please see Brother Alonzo mm -hmm. because we really want um, those of you that wish to be involved to be involved and be a part. And it's awesome if you remember yeah. last year or years past. Mm -hmm. It's really a good play. Amen. Um, we would like to also remind you that if you um, have an announcement that you want to make, available to the body of Second Baptist. Please have your announcements in by Thursday, yes. um, and we will greatly appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And once again, we want to thank you for joining in, being a part of the uh, Bible study. Yes. And I apologize for my absence on last week, and I really didn't know that it made that much of a difference mm -hmm. until on Sunday, mm -hmm. um, people were coming up saying, oh, we missed you on Wednesday, we missed you mm -hmm. on Wednesday. Yeah. And I didn't realize that, so, my apologies, and I'm grateful Amen. to be here this morning. And Amen. thank you so much um, for missing me when I'm not here. Because oh, yeah. I realize it's not me that you actually missing, because I'm a mess. <laughs> but it's the Spirit of God. <laughs> Amen. That Amen. I try to do my very best for um, to allow him to use me according to his own righteousness. Mm -hmm. So we thank you. We thank you, Pastor. Bless you. Um, Bless you. For just being who you are thank you and uh pastor smith we love him mm -hmm. and right before we came on air he was messing with me but you know god is good and yes, we is. we thank god for our pastor we love yes, him sir. and we know the work and the assignment god has called him to it's not an easy walk and we thank him for his faithfulness he comes um and does what god tells him to do in spite of and that's what I love, yes, when we yes. can do in spite of, because yes. we all got something we can say. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would have did it, but mm -hmm. I'm tired of this, but, yeah. and, but and when you do it in spite of, yeah. that's a beautiful thing. So yeah. we thank you. Well, bless you. Bless you. We truly thank you. And we thank God for just every everyone that's a part of this Bible study yeah. Yeah. and everyone that you don't even see behind the scenes that's right. working yeah. that this Bible study might go forward without mm -hmm. a hitch. So yes. God bless you all. Yes. You know I love you. Yes. And keep us in your prayers. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Minister White. You're welcome. Thank you so much for the encouraging words and for the announcements that were made. And you're absolutely right. So often we, we're sitting in front of you mm -hmm. and you see us and, and we are only here and seen because we have some dedicated people yes. uh, who literally make sure uh, that we get an opportunity to be before you. Uh, we are grateful for Minister uh, V. Graham, who mm -hmm. continuously on a weekly basis gives us the information that we need That's to share right. both with the, the congregation and the community. So mm -hmm. please, whatever you do, avail yourselves to those announcements. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, make sure that you know what's transpiring in the life of the ministry so that you're available yes. for those days. Also, we want to say a special thanks to our cameraman. Amen. 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 And Alex Coleman, we are awesome. so grateful yes, yes. for his so commitment grateful. and his consistency Amen. in making sure uh, that we are here before you yes. on a weekly basis. Yes. We cannot say thank you enough to yes. Alex. He's just a beautiful a soul. Job. He really Amen. is. Yes. You know, and yes. I thank God for him. I really yes. do. In, in the amazing pieces that people don't know it, uh, but Alex not only does this on Wednesday, uh -huh. uh, and, and he's equally committed on doing this on Sunday morning. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Uh, and, and it's not like it's something that he just started doing. He's been doing it for a number of but years. But the good part is, like, mm -hmm. you know, I come in here dragging a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Sunday morning, Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. 
But every time I see him, he said, hey, how you doing? Like, yeah. he don't never have a complaint. Yeah. I'm always, I'm tired. <laughs> I didn't feel like getting up this morning. But he don't have that complaint. Yeah. Yeah. And so I thank God for him. Amen. You Amen. know, it's a blessing. So we, we are grateful for everyone that participated and is a part of this ministry yeah. here at Southern Baptist. This morning, we are absolutely excited because we have an awesome good, biblical good, text yes. uh, to deal with this morning. Yes. We are continuing our study in the gospel according to Dr. Luke. Mm -hmm. And Luke has pulled out some of those very minute details in reference to the Holy Week. Mm -hmm. Chapter 22 revolves around Wednesday. Mm -hmm. It is Wednesday in uh, the biblical text in chronological order. And there are some things that's transpired in the life of the Christ, uh, the individual who was truly the Messiah, who has been rejected by many of the Jews as being mm -hmm. the Messiah. Uh, and as we've noticed before, for some reason or another, he just doesn't seem to fit the bill uh, for those who are expecting the Messiah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like coming from the wrong side of the track, uh -huh. you know, not having been educated under certain uh, theological right. uh, professors. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and so this itinerant preacher uh, uh, has shaken up the world yes, he is. with 12 uh, compadres, if mm -hmm. you will, friends, uh, followers. So let's take a look at chapter 22. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. I looked at some other versions of this week, mm -hmm. NIV and CEB, and settled on the more conservative uh, in a, uh, NRSV. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look and see what the New Revised Standard Version has to say. Verse 1 begins by saying, Now the festival of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was near. And so it gives us the context of mm -hmm. what's transpiring in this holy city at this time. Mm -hmm. uh, it is one of those gatherings, those festival times that they gather to remember what God or Yahweh mm -hmm. had done for the people Amen. of Israel. Uh, they want to make sure that the Jews never forget That's what right. God has done. And so yeah. here is something to remind them that when they were leaving Egypt, uh -huh. uh, they were in such a hurry. Mm. Uh, they dared not use yeast to put in bread because they did not have the time to mm. wait for the yeast to rise. Wow. And so they continued uh, to utilize this experience, the unleavened bread, uh -huh. uh, and showing that this is a time when God allowed the death angel to literally pass over the homes of the Israelite children. Wow. So the male child, the firstborn male child, mm -hmm. was saved as a result That's of right. the lamb the lamb's blood that was Ooh. put on the doorpost mm -hmm. so that it allowed the death angel to pass over while at the same time mm -hmm. taking out the firstborn of the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. Wow. It reminds us that we must never allow our people to forget what God has done for us. Amen. How God has seen the people enslaved and in bondage mm, mm, and then being set free only because of the mercy and grace of God. Amen. We must remind our people of where we've been That's right. and how we came out Thank of you, it. Jesus. In verse 2 the word says the chief priests and the scribes are looking for a way to put Jesus to death mm, mm, mm. for they were afraid of the people. Isn't it ironic how you'll have people who have dastardly deeds in mind but are frightened of the masses mm -hmm. and will hold off until the time they think the time is mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. These yeah. individuals, religious yes, leaders, they... the chief priests, uh -huh. and the scribes, and remember these guys are perfectionists, so they think, mm -hmm. but they've missed the very heart of what it is God wants them to know. Any thoughts, Minister White? No, this is, this is, this, is, that's good. That's okay. real good. And, and so we have to recognize that just because individuals have titles doesn't always suggest that whatever they say is right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've got chief priests and you've got the scribes and these are the individuals who were designated. So when there's a transliteration of the writings, specifically, say, from Aramaic, Hebrew, Greek, 
uh, and today when we say into the English language, then you'll discover that even though they were scholarly, uh, they were scholarly incorrect. So would you say, question, so would you say um, these religious leaders were made up of um, the Sanhedrin Council? They, they do play a part okay. in this. Um, and a little later, we're going to discover that the Sanhedrin, uh, there was actually 70 to 72 of them. Okay. And they were indeed the religious leaders, ultra conservative in their beliefs. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so some of these could be a part of the Sanhedrin. Okay. No doubt. Okay. Yeah. You see how you show me up for me? pronounce it correctly. Oh, no, no, no. And I don't want to well, wrestle with you. Yeah. Well, you know, and the thing of it is, you know, you can say uh, t tomato. I can say tomato. Uh -huh. You can say potato. I can say potato. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of those things. Oh, uh, these I, I know it. <laughs> but, but again, you know, one will say it one way, somebody else may yeah. say it another way. But yeah. you know what? The reason why I asked that question is because we oftentimes think that they were the only ones that plotted against our Lord, you mm -hmm. know? And we don't realize that there were so many um, that were set against them. Yeah. I mean, when we read it a couple of weeks ago, how, I mean, they gathered together, they plotted, they, you like, I mean, they was like, you know how we get together and we start mm -hmm. brainstorming? That's exactly what they were doing. Yeah. They were trying to like, come up with a way to kill Jesus, Chicken like you said, yeah. without the people seeing or yeah. understanding it, because they knew the people, the cry of the people. Yeah. They didn't, you know, and, and, and it was just, it's just so amazing yeah. to me how, you know, they just plotted against our Lord. And they, they were so fearful of him because he had such a following. Uh -huh. He had such an influence. And it was a positive and correct influence over the people, whereas these religious leaders at the time, the amazing piece is always that these fragmented groups mm -hmm. of personnel, when you when you take a look at the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they didn't even like each other. <laughs> no, I know. I mean, they, they're religious leaders. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, you've got the Pharisees, who believe in angels, believe in demons, believe in the coming of the Messiah, believe in the resurrection of the dead and life after uh -huh. death. And you got the Sadducees on the other hand uh, that literally are the financial backing of religious leaders. Uh -huh. and, and they seem to have more authority and power, but they're really not interested in angels, principalities, demons, uh, uh, not even interested in, in life after death. They said, eat, drink, and be merry because tomorrow you die. They dislike each other because they have totally different opinions, but they hate Jesus mm -hmm. even more. And you know what, Pastor, can I get in front of that mm -hmm. for a minute? Sure. And we're dealing with that today. Sure. If you understand the world and what's, what we're going through today, mm -hmm. we're dealing with so much of those that don't even like each other. They will come together yeah. to plot against a group of folk. Yeah. Or this one, yeah. if you ever notice, Christianity is is the most come against. Uh, I I don't even like to use the word religion, but I don't want to say religion in this instance. To any other religion, I find that this is what my my um my opinion is that this is me. You may disagree, but I find that it's so hard. Um, to live, not not to live as Christ, but to confess Christ, mm -hmm. and then people not be judgmental of you. Oh, yeah. and, and instead of saying, you know, oh, well, that's why Jesus came, yeah. you know, to save us, people will go over you with mm -hmm. a fine tooth comb to tell you why you're not a Christian. Right. But you can make a mistake as a, um, as a Muslim, as whatever you are. Mm -hmm. But as a Christian, you better not make a mistake. Yeah, yeah. So it's like uh, the Christian is scrutinized even more. Exactly. That's uh, exactly than how I other feel. Yeah. Exactly because um, you know it's just that's my opinion. Right. But 
I'm not going to take you in another in it's another okay. direction it's going because on. it's just it's just you know we think we up our backs be up against the wall. Just mm. think about what our Lord and Savior yeah. was going through, yeah. and, and he had to remain yeah. faithful yeah. on his way to Jerusalem. Yeah. Remember that time you preached? Can you remain faithful? Yeah. On your that's a question. Yeah, yeah. surely. That's yeah, a surely question. Is. Can you remain faithful when your back is against the wall? Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. And, and so the first two verses we've been given the intro as to what is happening on this Wednesday. When we arrive at verse 3, we got the masses and they're all making their way into Jerusalem mm -hmm. to celebrate right. the great Passover. Right. So there's probably millions of, of Jews right. that are coming into this area. And verse 3 says, Then Satan entered into Judas called Iscariot. Uh-huh who was one of the twelve, Ooh. he went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers of the temple police about how he might betray him to them. They were greatly pleased mm -hmm. and agreed to give him money. Uh. So he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray him to mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. when no crowd was present. Mm -hmm. So he's waiting for of the crowd to die down mm, mm, before mm. he begins doing what it is he came Ooh. to do, which is literally to portray uh -huh. the Messiah yes. and the Christ. Yes. Wow. And look at look at it today. Mm. What do we take money for? Yeah. Yeah. How many times we take money for the wrong thing? Yeah. Well you just look at the corruption in in the political arena. Oh my God. Yeah. You know, and we don't even open up that can of worms. Yeah. How many of our representatives even we send that represent us don't even have our best interest at no, heart? No. They being bought up by every um don't sign me up. Yeah. They, <laughs> every group uh, that has some money they That's they right. And they them. call them lobbyists. That's right. what they do. Yeah. They lobby for the rich, not for common people. Yeah. And so we got to be so careful. Yeah. God want us to be aware of these things, not to actually get caught up in a whole right. lot of it. But he don't, he said he wouldn't have us ignorant. And so in order for us not to be ignorant, we need to understand the concept of what the world is. Yeah. We are in this world. We are not of this world. Right. But he right. has not made us ignorant yeah. to this fact. Yeah. And when I think about the lobbyists and mm -hmm. all those um, rich old men and mm -hmm. Um, pharmaceutical companies, we have to understand exactly what's going on yeah. so we can stand in times we need to. Yeah, so true, so true. Thank you. In verse 7, the and verses following, it says, Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Mm. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. Hmm. They ask him, where do you want us to make uh -huh. preparations for it? So they're clueless. And so mm -hmm. they, they want to know, okay, all right, uh -huh. we want to celebrate, but where are we going to do this? Right. So they ask him, where do you want us to make preparations for it? In verse 10, he says, listen. He said to them, when you've entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And so here's the distinguishing mark to identify the person that you are to approach. Because you're not just wow. going to approach anybody because not everybody is willing to embrace That's right. the Christ. Uh -huh. And so the outstanding piece is that normally it was the female who was responsible for, for the carrying the water. Yeah, That's right. absolutely. But here it is a man. So here is a sign that's mm. already been uh -huh. prepared before you get there. Uh -huh. yeah. So the preparation has been made. So so we really know right away that the Christ is always prepared to do what's right. Amen. We can't just move all willy-nilly and assume uh -huh. that, that there's no preparation. There's always preparation. Amen. Yeah. That was a good point. And so he says in verse 12, he says, he will show you a large room upstairs already furnished. Make preparations for us there. 
So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the fast, the Passover meal. Mm -hmm. So obviously this event, again, has already been prearranged, mm -hmm. and everybody knows what it is that they're supposed to do. Right. And, and so now the disciples are being clued in. In verse 14, the word says, When the hour came, he took his place at the table, and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover mm -hmm. with you before I suffer. An allusion <coughs> to his demise. Mm -hmm. He says, for I tell you, I will not eat it until it's fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. Mm -hmm. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Mm. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. And we pause here just for a moment, because it is a reminder to the Jews that there was a former covenant that was made with Abraham. Uh -huh. And so now the Christ is suggesting that here is a new covenant right and the covenant is signed in my blood mm, 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 mm. he says but see the one who betrays me is with me and his hand is on the table wow for the son of man is going as it has been determined but woe to that man or to the one by whom he is betrayed uh -huh. can you imagine being seated here in close proximity to the one that is called the Christ, mm. the one that individuals has referred to as the Messiah, and you can't get any closer than break bread with someone because this is literally something that transpires with people that you love. You don't just eat with anyone. This was something that the Hebrews did, which was a sign of respect and appreciation for the people surrounding you. And here is the Judas. Mm -hmm. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it would be who would do this. They're filled with disbelief because they just can't believe that anybody seated at the table that has been with them for the last three and a half years in the ministry would have anything to do with bringing about the demise of their rabbi their scholar, their teacher, their brother. This this has got to be disheartening. It is, but you know, when I think about it, you, when I think about it the way you just said it, it's always the one closest to you that hurts you. Because right. you ever notice, can't nobody hurt you like the one that you care for. Right. And so, that's a whole nother story. Because but, those are the ones we let our guard down <laughs> with. You know, with, with close friends, with family members, uh -huh. you know, with, with relatives, with church folks. Uh -huh. and, and so we we become vulnerable. Exactly. We let our guards down. And lo and behold, they're sitting there dining with you uh -huh. and trying to figure out how to take you out. Uh -huh. That You know, it, it's a situation. And what I, you know what I love about this? Can I back you up for one mm, second? Go right um, as, as Jesus is telling his disciples, you know, to go and prepare um, for the Passover, and he goes through the step of, you know, the unleavened bread. We heard about that, mm -hmm. with the wine and things like that. And it's so funny to me. Well, it's not funny, but um, it, it amazes me sometimes, you know, um, the breakdown of communion and how we take Mm -hmm. communion um and sometimes we don't even know why we take a communion right right and um you know i was when i was reading this on my own i was thinking about that i was like you know it's amazing sometimes we don't even understand why we um take communion and sometimes right. we feel like it's something that we can actually um you know do without mm -hmm. and then i thought about how when the Israelites were leaving um, um, Israel. Mm -hmm. That um, and why this festival 
uh, the streets was taking place mm -hmm. at this time. Right. And just remember how, you know, at the age of 12 in the Jewish um, mm -hmm. community, like all those, all those, um, I don't even know how many people it was, but just Which gathering together, yeah, just, yeah, just gathering together to go into Jerusalem to remember mm -hmm. what God had delivered them from. Yeah. And here we are today, we have, we don't, okay, sometimes, not all of us, but a lot of times, we don't even realize why we take communion right. and we take, take it so lightly, right. you know, and um, so... That's what came to mind when I was reading this. I was like, wow, God. Yes. You know, um, in my mind's eye, I kind of get get an understanding of why why you teach us the way you do. Because well, sometimes we don't have a clue. Right, yeah. And it, it's a shame uh, that we, we have a faith. Mm -hmm. Like you said, that it's not a religion, but a way of life. Uh-huh. And sometimes we have no idea why we do what we do. And the truth of the matter is, is that there is a lot of Jewish influence. Uh -huh. Because don't forget, Christianity comes out of Jewish Amen. Amen. And, and so the, the Old Testament is replete with the history of the Hebrews. Uh -huh. and, and we pick up that history and we literally are influenced by what they did That's and what right. they taught. Uh -huh. Yeah. And and if you don't know your history, uh -huh. you don't you have no idea why you're doing what you're doing. And you know, it made me think that this is another quick point I made. It made me think, you know how when we take when we do communion, mm -hmm. even as Christians, some even Christians differ on this. We differ about what, what it means to ha to take communion. Mm -hmm. Some people actually feel like, oh, um, it's I can't think of the word, but I'll explain it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we can't eat flesh and blood. Some people okay. say, like, like we taking on cannibalism. Yeah, cannibalism. Mm -hmm. And then others say, no, it's just a sacrifice we mm -hmm. do in remembrance right. of Jesus. Like we just differ on so so many things instead mm -hmm. of understanding the very point. We're mm -hmm. we're we're it's a outward showing of remembering Christ for right. what he has done for us right. and not just the children of Israel today I mean yeah you might say oh well, I wasn't there well today mm -hmm. what has Jesus done for you today yeah. Yeah. are you saved do you are you okay I'm not going to go there but we need to cut with the shenanigans a lot of time and, and, and read our word and understand the word and I promise you, the Holy Spirit will give you understanding. And then there won't be so much schism in the body. It won't be so much bickering. Why we do this? Why we do this? Allow the Holy Spirit to come in yeah. and teach us and give us understanding. He said there's nothing he will withhold from us yeah. if we ask of him. So any man lack knowledge or um, my other pastor to say, whatever you get, Sister um, why he used to call me evangelist. Get get understanding. Yeah. And so that sticks with me all the time. Yeah. We need to get understanding. And if God be true and every man a liar, then he will not have us to be ignorant. Part of part of our issue is in the twenty first century, we we're satisfied with easy religion. Mm. We we will show up on a Sunday morning, excuse me, some Sunday morning. <laughs> And, and and we'll sit there and we want to be entertained by the choir. Mm -hmm. We want the, the preacher to give us a sermon that's appealing and, and is not something uh, that's going to chastise us. Uh -huh. So make us happy that's so right. that we can go home yep. uh, and continue living the way we've been living. Uh -huh. we, we don't want to be involved in Bible study. Mm -hmm. We don't want to come out to the Bible study. Uh, and therefore, we, we can lay claim to be ignorant of what it says. When That's in all actuality, so true, God is wanting us to know without a, a shadow of a doubt. I mean, we look today, there were times when we would have individuals that would show up for Bible study. You know 
know as well as I do. Mm -hmm. We've been inviting individuals to come out for the Wednesday morning Bible study at 11 uh -huh. o'clock. We're still sitting here this morning, Wednesday after Wednesday, just the three of us in uh -huh. this room. Yeah. And yet, personnel have said, we want to come out to Bible study uh -huh. Wednesday nights. I know. We've attempted to have Bible studies. Uh, I come from home, and, and I will be here. We will, There will be maybe five or six of us here, uh -huh. and folks still don't show up. Right. And, and so they still have not availed themselves to, to know what the Word of God says. Uh, don't ask me what the reason is behind that. I, they can only speak to that themselves. And you know what, real quick, while you're on that subject, that is so true. We do. We look to come and get all the good stuff. You know, we don't want to come to church and hear what God really has to say. Do you know, and I'm just going to share a part of me. Mm -hmm. Do you know Sunday when you was preaching, I was being convicted? Because mm -hmm. I understand and I realize I got things in my life that yeah. I can only speak for me. Yeah. I got things in my life that I want, that I, that that I need God to, to change, to purge. And I have to be willing yeah. to allow him to do right. that. Right. And so when you ask the question, um, according to the scripture, mm -hmm. I had, I just went blank. Mm -hmm. um, oh God, I can't think of it right now. All right, well, whatever. Go mm -hmm. back and look at it. You'll yeah. see what he asked. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> I was sitting there. I was like, Oh my God. Mm. But you know what? And I thank God that I'm not above correction. Right. Because if that was the case, I wouldn't come back next Sunday. Yeah. Because I didn't want I wouldn't want to hear right. what the spirit of God might have for me. Yeah. But I thank God that He keeps allowing me to come back. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Because the moment I stop coming back, yeah. Yeah. ain't no hope for me. Yeah. But I thank God that I keep coming back and I keep hearing the word and I keep being convicted because, you know, little by little, as God see fit, I see change coming about in my life, right. no matter what the devil do, yeah. because he always got a new trick. Mm -hmm. And I understand the tricks that he got in my life. Mm -hmm. And I know what he be trying to do, but I thank God, even as we read on, and I don't want to get ahead of us, but Jesus told Peter, I pray for you. Mm -hmm. I, the Satan, uh, Satan desires you. He desires to sift you as wheat. But I pray for you yeah. that your faith might be remain. Yeah. Who God? That's yeah. me. Yeah. That is so me, Pastor. Yeah. I pray to God that my faith would remain. And I pray God, you know, because the cares of this world mm -hmm. and things that go on, we can easily be moved. Yeah. We yeah. think we can't be moved. Ain't hey, nothing going to turn me from God. That's a lie. Watch yeah. yourself. Because that's, that's, that's the enemy. That's exactly what he wants you to do. Uh-huh. Go ahead, Pastor. I'm sorry. That's yeah, all right. So we move to, to verse 24. We just discovered that there was the instituting of the Lord's Supper. And on the heels of that, listen carefully to what transpires mm -hmm. next. The word says, a dispute also rose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. Uh -huh. And Jesus has just informed them, first off, that his demise is coming. Uh -huh. He's informing them that he's having this celebration during this Passover season, and he's doing it in such a way to say farewell. Uh -huh. And these jokers are sitting there, and they're debating of which one of them it's is going greatest. to be the greatest. <laughs> we can sometimes be misguided and sometimes be misinformed uh, and miss the very pivotal moment uh -huh. that's being set up before us. In verse 25, the word says, But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. Uh -huh. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest uh -huh. among you must become like the youngest, uh -huh. and the leader like the one who serves. For whoever is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves. Yes. Oh, excuse me. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I'm among you 
as one who serves. Well, so the greatest position is the one who serves, not the one who is being served. He says, you are those who have stood by me in my trials, uh -huh. and I confer on you just as my father has conferred on me a kingdom mm -hmm. so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And you will sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Mm, mm, mm. Now he's already promised them Ooh. that they are going to have a kingship. Mm, mm, mm. So in glory, obviously, there are some strategic positions wow. that have been relegated for these guys who've been faithful to him. Now don't, don't miss it mm, because mm, here mm. it comes. In verse 31, the word says, Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to uh -huh. sift all of you like wheat. Mm -hmm. But I prayed for you that your own Ooh, faith may Lord. not fail. Mm -hmm. And you, when once you've turned back, strengthen your brothers. That's now he right. is implying to Simon uh -huh. something's going to transpire in your life mm -hmm. that's going to make you turn your back on me. Don't miss it. Mm -mm. And he said to him, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to prison mm -hmm. and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will crow, mm -hmm. will not crow this day until you've denied three times that you know me. Peter was so adamant about the fact that he was going to remain faithful uh -huh. to him no matter what transpired. Just as you said a minute ago, uh -huh. the devil has disillusioned us into believing that we can always be faithful uh -huh. and strong in spite of uh -huh. and we'll go to jail and if, if we don't go to jail, we'll die for you. <laughs> and Jesus That's has so to true. bring him back to reality. Uh-huh. That's so true. And you know, it's it's so funny because I used to be exactly like that. I mm. really did. And I thought I meant that. I meant right. every right. word that I was saying at the time right. that I was saying it yeah. until hard trials came. And I was like, I don't even want this. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. And before I realized it, it wasn't going to be no walking apart. Right. This ain't no piece of cake. Yeah. You know, th right. this ain't for the week. Yeah, you're right. And so... You know, when I was reading, I was. Did you see me looking down at my phone? I'm reading my blue le blue letter Bible, mm -hmm. and what I do is I normally um, have two versions up mm -hmm. at the same time, right. and so I'm looking at um, right now. I'm looking at um, what am I looking at? I'm looking at the King James version because that's my mm -hmm. knowing. I love the King James King James version, mm -hmm. and I'm looking right now at the new. Living translation, so I I'll put any different translations mm -hmm. up here because I like to compare sometimes to get a better understanding right. of what the word is saying. And so I'm looking at it here, and it's so funny because Peter and we all know Peter. You know he mm -hmm. you we know Peter. His diary of the uh, night. <laughs> yeah. He like he like. Hold up, Lord. <laughs> yeah. I got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For sure. That's us. Uh, That's us. And you know, it's so funny because and, and Jesus is like, man, go on, sit down because before the clock uh, curl, three times you're going to yeah. deny me. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and he's so bold in his belief. Well, you got to give it to him. He I actually, know. Yes, he he actually like you said, he believed <laughs> He believed us. Just like us. We uh -huh. believe. Uh -huh. That little rock, we better understand who yeah. who who what we dealing with. And so I say that not to question your faith, but don't be disillusioned yeah. by the enemy. Yeah. Because that's the one way he tries to trick us. Yeah. And as fast as we think that we can't be moved, <laughs> you know, yeah. here comes some hard stuff in right. our lives. Right. You know, and so we gotta we gotta stay yeah. available to the um, to the world and the spirit of God. We we know what is ideal, mm -hmm. but then there's the real. Uh huh. Amen. We, we know what it is we should do. The question is, 
what is it that we do? Oh, you better tell the truth. You know, I mean, there's days when, when I know what it is God expects of me. It's my choices. Uh-huh. That has a tendency to You better to get go ahead wrong. and tell the truth, sir. In verse 35, mm, the word mm, says, mm. he said to them, when I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? Mm. And they said, no, not a thing. He said to them, but now the one who has a purse must take it and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. Mm -hmm. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counting, uh, and he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, it is enough. And so on the one hand, he has informed them that they shouldn't have a purse or an extra tunic mm -hmm. or a sword. But now he's readying them for what is about to take mm. place. For there's going to come a time when they're going to be lonely, when they're going to be rejected. Mm. At one time, there were individuals who were supplied for their needs. But now there's coming to be a time mm. where the people would reject the followers of the Christ. Mm. And he says, you'll need to be prepared to protect yourselves. So uh, that same admonition is true for those of us today. Mm -hmm. At one time, there were individuals who would supply our needs. But it seems as time goes on, it looks like there are individuals who no longer adhere to that whole ideology. Mm -hmm. In verse 39, the word says, He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. Obviously, this was an area that he was familiar with, and they were familiar with, uh, because it says he came out and went, as was his custom, he'd done it before, to the Mount of Olives. Obviously, there's there's some individuals that he knows that's quite wealthy, that owns olive gardens, and this has become his secret praying ground. Mm. It says, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said, to them, pray that you may not come into the time of trial. I said to you before that this is obviously a familiar area mm. to them. It is his private praying ground. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed. So it's not very far because one of the rules is that uh, the suggestion that if your stones throw away, uh, the stone had to weigh a certain amount. So if you're looking at a stone that may weigh five pounds, seven pounds, or whatever, you can only throw it so far. Okay. So even if they throw it, they're still in hearing distance. Okay. Of what's being done and what's being said. So he knelt down and prayed, and here's what he said. He said, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup mm, from mm, me. Mm. Yet, not my will but yours be done. The good piece is that he recognizes mm -hmm. uh, that even though he desires for this agonizing event mm -hmm. to be removed, he will move strategically to the point where whatever it is his father wants him to do, that's what he wants to do, knowing the anguish that he's about to experience. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. Mm, mm, mm. And so often we pass over that. Mm -hmm. That even at this hour where an angel comes and shores him up and strengthens him so that he can get through this difficult hour. Mm -hmm. We need to recognize that in our personal lives, when we are up against something, when our back's against the wall, mm -hmm. when we don't think we can make it, God sends us Ooh. our personal angels Ooh, oh, oh. to strengthen us so that we can get through those difficult moments. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became mm -hmm. like great drops mm -hmm. of blood wow. falling down on That's the awesome. ground. That's mm -hmm. agonizing. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, mm. why are you sleeping?
sleep. And uh-huh. that question could be asked of us today. Yes. Why in the world is it we are sleeping when we should be busy doing the assignments that Christ has given to us? Amen. So he says to them, get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Yes. He says, not so much for me. Pray uh, for yourself. I know that's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Because he's been strengthened and he's been ready for this predicament. Right. Verse 47 says, while he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came. And the one called Judas, uh-huh. he didn't come by himself. He brought a crowd with him, just like a coward. Uh-huh. One of the twelve was leading them. So the crowd is coming, and Judas is leading the crowd. He approached Jesus to kiss him, which is a signal to let him know that this is the guy that you need to arrest. He kissed him. Mm. But Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, mm-hmm. they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? <laughs> they were to jump his rear end. Uh-huh. <laughs> then one of them struck the slave of the high priest uh-huh. and cut off his right ear. That's Peter. Mm-hmm. You know how Peter is. Uh-huh. And every preacher needs a Peter. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. But Jesus says, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? Mm. When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Wow. And that's when Satan and his minions work undercover in the dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's so Jesus right. is revealing uh, to the audience who it is that's here. Mm-hmm. These are the representatives of Lucifer himself. Uh-huh. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him to the high priest's house. But Peter was followed at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the far light, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. Uh, So she can see and recognize that Peter uh, is one of these Galileans. She sees, she remembers uh, that he was a part of this number. But he denied it, saying, woman, mm-hmm. I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, you also are one of them. But Peter said, man, I'm not. Uh-huh. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, surely this man also was with him, for he's a Galilean. Uh-huh. But Peter said, man, I do not know what you're talking about. At that moment, when he was still speaking, mm-hmm. the cock mm-hmm. crow. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Can you imagine? I can't. Having the Christ to turn and look Ooh, at you at that moment. Lord. <laughs> because what he warned you of has just been fulfilled. Ooh, it Lord. has happened. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord. Mm-mm-mm. How he had said to him, before the cock crows today. You will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Mm -hmm. Some translations would suggest that this is indeed the fourth watch of the night. Mm -hmm. This is roughly around three o'clock in the morning. Wow. And it is at this hour in the middle of the night that the Sanhedrin is not allowed to bring judgment. Uh, Really? They have to wait until the morning. Oh. Watch carefully. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him okay. and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, prophesy, who is it that struck you? Mm. Even in 
their dastardly deeds. They are trying to make fun of the Christ. Uh -huh. They have him blindfolded so he cannot see. So they're saying, okay, go ahead and prophesy. Yeah, and who did tell it? us who, who did, did it. Yeah. Oh, they was cold. Oh, yeah. yeah. They was cold. Uh, we, we blindfold him today. Yeah. And, and we just, we're a little shrewd today. And so we've discovered other methods when we're asking who struck you. Go ahead, tell us, Jesus. Mm, 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 mm. They kept heaping many other insults on him. I wonder what kind of things we do in our personal lives that heaps insults upon the Christ. Can you get off my... <laughs> wonder sometimes oh, some get of out what my we do. What? Please. I'm telling you, all of us at some time or another uh, have literally lost what it is we're supposed to be doing. And, and we're missing the point in so many ways. Mm -mm -mm. When day came, remember mm, they said heaven yeah, can't do a thing okay, at night. Okay, so I see that. Yeah, so when day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council. Now remember, we begin with the chief priests uh -huh. and the scribes. Uh -huh. We get back to, as we close out this 22nd okay. chapter, right back to these knuckleheads uh -huh. who literally assume that they are doing what they think is right. How many times have we done some things we thought they were right in the sight of God, only later to discover, you know, maybe that's not what God wanted uh -huh. of me. Yeah. Any thoughts, Minister, before I proceed moving towards the close? I can't feel my tongue. I can't <laughs> That is so good. Bless Why are you God. always doing that? Bless God. <laughs> This is so good. I'm gonna let you continue. I know we only, we about to be done, but man, that's what I was thinking about. Okay, that's one thing about God. You can get excited, you be happy, you be eager, you be like, yeah, yeah. and then you get to a point of description and God like put you right in your place. Like, yeah. okay, let me sit down and shrink yeah. in my chair. There because you he didn't call yourself. me. That. Yeah, here I am. Oops. Whoa, I was pointing the finger, but uh -huh. uh, I didn't pull it. Because look at verse 66. This is when they came. The assembly mm, 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 mm. of the elders of the people. These are the leaders of the people. The groups have shown up right here in this great event of celebration. And they decided that this is a pivotal moment to bring about the demise of the cross. Mm, mm, mm. Both chief priests and the scribes gathered together, and they brought him to their council. So they really want somebody to make the decision for them uh -huh. because they can't make the decision themselves. They said, if you are the Messiah, mm. still questioning whether or not uh -huh. he is the Messiah that is to come, tell us. He replied, if I tell you, exactly. you will not believe. Exactly. Yeah. And if I question you, you, you won't even answer. Wow. And why not? Because they are afraid of the masters uh -huh. that are following the Christ. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. Ooh. Wow. He just declared openly to them wow. that he is going to be seated at the Ooh. right hand of the sovereign God. You know this did not set well, oh, with these oh, religious oh. scholars. Listen, they they yeah, ready. Yeah, they ready to go in. You yeah, hear this? Yeah. Mm. Because the right hand is the seat of authority and power, and he says it's been designated for the person that God has it for, and and that's me. Uh -huh. And I'm gonna be sitting right next to him. Exactly, and that's so good that we got. Oh, sex, we ain't got no time. <laughs> but you remember the lady that asked Jesus, can my son sit on the white, right, one white right, and one white? Yeah. That's what that brought me to. Yeah. Oh, my God. But yeah. go ahead, Pastor, because yeah. you Look, know I get excited. you're absolutely right. 
you know, and, 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 and even then Jesus says, you know, I mean, because on the one hand, mama was asking, uh -huh. and, and then the then the brother said, you know, can my brother and I sit on uh -huh. the left and right? And Jesus said, let me ask you a question. Uh -huh. yeah. Can you drink from the cup? Oh, right. you That's better. Right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the cup. Uh. Here is the cup. Oh, shoot. See, Verse you 70 be says, all of them ask, are you then the son of God? Collectively, these religious leaders and elders, these chief priests and scribes, they're coming at Jesus and they said, okay, then tell us, are you the son of God? Uh -huh. Since you're going to sit on his right. Mm, 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 mm. And he said to them, you, you say, say that I am. Uh, that's right. Right, yeah. yeah that's so, right. So, so technically, he didn't make that claim, mm, but he pushed you the issue. You say that I yeah. am. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Then they said, what further testimony do we need? Uh -huh. We've heard it ourselves <laughs> from his own lips. It just Ooh, goes to show Lord. us that sometimes individuals can deliberately misinterpret what's being said so that they can draw their own conclusion the way they want to draw their conclusion. Oh, you better go ahead. Yeah. But Jesus helps them to answer it themselves. Uh -huh. He said, what do you say? Uh -huh. yeah. So if I'm seated at the right hand uh -huh. of my father, yeah. That's the real that. issue that they're facing is that it's suggestion that he's he deity. Said, That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. His authority. And, and That's they right. Did not want to hear that. That's good. That's a good stuff. Chapter job. 22 was an awesome chapter. Yes, it was. Please remember that next week we'll be dialoguing in reference uh, to chapter 23. So get your reading done. Amen. Uh, jot down your notes. If you have any questions, please send that to us uh -huh. uh, so that we can address some of those questions uh, as soon as possible. Uh -huh. Um Again, we ask that you continue to pray for one another. Keep all the announcements in mind. And please know uh, that this coming weekend, Sunday afternoon, we begin our revival here at Second Baptist uh -huh. Worship Center. At 3 o'clock, Bishop Rudolph Mills will be Amen. here as our revivalist. And then Monday night at 7 p.m. and Tuesday night at 7 p.m. If you don't want to miss this revival, Second Baptist membership, don't forget, you are supposed to be praying and asking God to send us a revival. Yes. God bless you and heaven smile upon you. This is our prayer this day. Amen. Amen.